The Sun is a star among the billions of stars in our galaxy, the Milky Way. It is the most massive object of our solar system. It is the central star of our planetary system. It has flooded the Earth with rays of light for 4.6 billion years. The Sun is life. It is also the only star known by all humankind. However, few of us know its true nature and incredible complexity. Trying to understand its structure, its functioning, its activity is getting a broader picture. It is also starting to understand how the Sun interacts with the planets. It is also raising questions concerning many other stars. The Sun is a yellow dwarf star and consists in fractions of mass of 75% hydrogen, 24% helium and around 1% heavier elements. This gigantic sphere of gas of 1.4 billion kilometer of diameter represents on its own 99.9% .9 of the mass of our whole solar system. The Sun does one full rotation in 25 days at the equator. As it is a fluid body rotating at a significant speed, it results in an ablatantness that we will qualify as natural. Its diameter measures a few dozens of kilometer less along its polar axis than at the equator. Seen from the Earth, this difference is not noticeable naked eye. It's like spotting a golf ball at a distance of 550 km. Detecting this solar ablatedness has been possible, amongst others, with the Picard satellite and its ingenious SODISM telescope, which observed the sun from mid-wave ultraviolets to near-infrared. But why does the sun's ablatedness arouse such an interest? The measurement of the sun's ablatedness gives precious indications on the rotation of the interior layers of the Sun and on the magnetism under the surface. It must be known that the interior rotation of the Sun is a fundamental element. That is what generates the magnetic field that creates the solar variability. The exact shape of the Sun also enables to carry out one of the tests of Albert Einstein's general relativity. Indeed, the exact distribution of the solar mass determines how the Sun affects the orbit of all the planets, and particularly that of Mercury. The solar ablatedness is hard to determine. The Picard satellite is trying to take up the challenge. To discover and understand the importance of this value, we will travel back through time. The story goes back to the end of the 19th century. Simon Newcomb defined the ablatedness of the Sun by the difference between the equatorial solar radius and the polar solar radius. He estimated it at 500 mass. In the 19th century, Arthur Hours observed the Sun and compiled measurements. He determined the value for the solar radius of 959.63 arc seconds. It is still the value of reference. From the analysis of the data, he also deduced a solar ablatedness of 38 mass. There are numerous other measures at the turn of the century, noticeably those of Leopold Friedrich Anton Ambrun and Wilhelm Schur in Göttingen, Charles Lane Poor at the Columbia Observatory, and those of Maria Antonella Giannuzzi at the Rome Observatory. Then, Robert Henry Dick and Mark Goldenberg laid down the base of the study of the parameters of the shape of the Sun in 1970. They measured the solar ablatedness at 41.9 mass and revealed the importance of those measures to the scientific community. From 1993 to 2008, measures are regularly made at the Pic du Midi Observatory in France by Jean Roche and his students. They will show a very slight variability of the ablatedness with the solar cycle. Despite the good conditions of observation and altitude, they mainly demonstrate the limits of the measures taken from the ground and the necessity to resort to spatial means in order to be clear of atmospherical turbulence. As soon as 1996, a spatial mission is offered to the CNES. It is called Picard, as a tribute to the astronomer of that name. 
In parallel to that, the first measures taken by balloon are made from 40 km in altitude on the impulse of Sabatino Sofia with a specific instrument, the Solar Distance Sextant. It shows values varying from 3 to 7 km. The origin of this research appeared just before the 19th century, when Urbain Le Verrier showed that the point on the orbit of Mercury, the closest to the Sun, called perihelion, moves at about 574 arc seconds per century. And yet, according to Newton's theory, this value should be of 531 arc seconds. That's a difference of 43 arc seconds between observation and theory. It must be known that Mercury has a very elliptical orbit and the Sun is in one of the focuses. If the Sun and Mercury were the only objects in the universe, Mercury's perihelion would be at the same place at each revolution. And yet, because of the gravitational disturbance between the planets, this is not the case. And with each revolution, the orbit of Mercury drifts of a few arc seconds. In order to justify the difference of results between the calculations of the Newton theory and the calculations done by Urbain Le Verrier, the astronomers of that time even tried imagining the existence of a planet between Mercury and the Sun. In fact, Albert Einstein calculated the correction that the general relativity brings to Newton's theory and justly found the justification of the 43 arc seconds difference. But the calculation done by Albert Einstein does not take into consideration the shape of the Sun. Consequently, the solar ablatonist can represent a significant part of the 43 arc seconds difference. In the 90s, scientists took an interest in the problem of the shape of the Sun by bringing forward the physical aftermath mostly concerned with gravitational moments. They determined the general figure of the star beyond its natural oblateness by showing that it's enabled to determine in a much more precise way the planet's ephemeris and possibly build alternative theories of gravitation. Today, the scientists focus on the measures obtained from the satellites. Near space now becomes accessible and the sun can be observed from outside the atmosphere. First, the MDI-SOI instrument of the space mission SOHO, whose measures of the solar oblateness are of 8.7 mass in 1997 at the minimum of solar spots. And the second is of 18.9 mass in 2001 at the maximum of solar spots. Is the difference due to solar activity? Secondly, comes the RESI satellite with his SAS instrument. The measures of solar oblateness obtained, dating of 2004, are of 8.01 mass after correction of the superficial magnetic effects. Then, the HMI instrument of the SDO space mission. This is an imager stemmed from the NASA experience, which consists of observing the solar limb at a wavelength of 617 nanometer. The measures obtained for the solar blatantness during the period between 2010 and 2012 are of 7.2 mass with an error of 0.5 mass. The measured solar oblateness seems constant and so will not depend on the solar cycles, at least during that short period when only six measures were taken. The scientists then start to make simultaneous measurements on the RESI SAS and SDO HMI instruments. Finally, the Picard satellite sent in 2010 and his SODISM telescope, enabling, amongst other things, to determine the solar oblateness over several wavelengths. The MDO mode enables to obtain the solar oblateness and the optical distortion of the telescope. This mode consists in making the acquisition of 80 images per angular position of the satellite. The satellite rotates on its axis by steps of 30 degrees, so in total, 12 positions. For one rotation of the satellite, the duration of the measures is of 1.6 orbits, so in total, 160 minutes of measurements. In order to reduce the uncertainty of the measures, a great number of images are taken during this specific operation. This method of measurement enables to limit the observed instrumental effects, particularly the coupling with the terrestrial environment. When the satellite passes over the southern Atlantic, the images of the SODISM instrument are disturbed. The CCD of the instrument is greatly impacted by the particles. The satellite is on a heliosynchronous orbit. The duration of one orbit is close to 99.4 minutes. Depending on the regions the satellite flies over, the infrared emissions of the Earth is different. The infrared flux have an effect on the measure. It is necessary to take a great number of images in order to average these effects. From the measures taken in 2011, the Picard team found the solar oblateness close to 7 mass, thus also around 5 to 6 kilometer. 
Understanding these measures, next to the results recorded by the Golf instrument that revealed the rotation of the solar core and the MDI instrument that showed the differential rotation of the convective layers that are closer to the outside, is of primary importance to the scientists nowadays. So studying solar seismology has shown that the Sun does not rotate in a rigid way. Its core turns five to eight times faster than the external layers. The measurements of the solar ablatonis are difficult to make and can reveal the presence of other phenomena that would disturb that simple vision, like the additional impact of the magnetic field under the surface that could contribute to longer solar cycles. The measurement of the solar diameter is still a current issue and still represents to this day a scientific and technological challenge.